Hey, what is up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today we are going to perform calculations using dimensional analysis. As always, we're going to break that down a little bit. We're going to perform single step calculations using dimensional analysis and then we are also going to perform multi-step calculations using dimensional analysis. Multi-step. I am multi-talented. Okay, so when students hear the words dimensional analysis, uh, they start to freak out a little bit. It's kind of scary, but essentially dimensional analysis is simply multiplying fractions. So if you take a look at the example on your screen, uh, we're going to multiply the number 2 by the fraction 6 over 4. Uh, now, if you remember your math skills, it's simply a matter of multiplying the numbers on the top, multiplying the numbers on the bottom, and then dividing. So as you look at this example, 2 times 6 over 4 becomes 12 over 4, which reduces further to 3. Now, that was a pretty simple example. Let's see if we can't crank it up a notch, do a few more fractions at the same time. Now we're gonna have three times one over two times two over five. Again, it's simply a matter of multiplying the numbers in your numerator, multiplying the numbers in your denominator, and then dividing those two numbers. So in our numerator, we have three times one times two over two times five. That simplifies to six over 10, which further simplifies to three over five, or in decimal format will become 0.6. So some pretty simplistic calculations there that you probably remember from your elementary school days, um, but we're gonna crank it up a notch and take us to algebra level and look at multiplying fractions that have some variables in it. So let's start out a little easy. We're gonna do three X times eight over two X. Same principle applies here. We're gonna multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. And so we end up with three X times eight over two X. We can simplify that further to 24x over 2x, which further reduces to 12. Now hold on to your hat here. We're going to do one more example, a little more complex, and then we'll come back and talk about some ways that we can arrive at that answer a little easier. 4x times 2y over 6 times 1 over 7x. Oh man, two variables equals the same thing again multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then divide. So we end up with 4x times 2y times 1 over 6 times 7x. That will simplify to 8 times xy over 42x, which will simplify further to 4y over 21. Or if we put that into decimal format, we end up with 0.2y with one significant figure. Now, for those of you who already know, this is just gonna be a quick reminder, but for those of you who may not know, Anytime you've got a number in your numerator and you've got that same number in the denominator, or if you've got a variable in your numerator and you've got that same variable in your denominator, essentially that's equal to one. Anything divided by itself is one. And so you can cancel those out of your calculations to make your life a little bit easier. Now, why are we concerned about fractions? Uh, I thought we were you know, learning chemistry. Uh, we're gonna apply this idea of multiplying fractions or dimensional analysis uh, to some problems in which you have to cancel out units. And we're gonna start with some units that you're really familiar with, so it helps make a little more sense. So when we apply it to some units that we use often in chemistry, hopefully it'll make a little more sense. Uh, we're gonna start with a conversion between 3.0 hours uh, to minutes. Again, recognize that it's just a series of fractions that we're gonna set up using a series of conversion factors. And remember those conversion factors relate two different units. So for example, we start with 3.0 hours times 60 minutes over one hour. Our conversion factor here relates minutes to hours. The process, however, works the same. Just treat your units as if they were variables like you would in an algebra problem. So we end up with three hours times 60 minutes over one hour that will simplify to 180 hours times minutes over one hour, which will further simplify to 180 minutes because our units of hours will cancel out. Now we're gonna crank it up one more time. This time we're gonna convert 3.0 hours to seconds. We're gonna start with our known amount of 3.0 hours. We're gonna set up a series of fractions or conversion factors. Uh, this time we're going to set up 3.0 hours times 60 minutes over one hour times 60 seconds over one minute. Now notice I've canceled out the units before performing any of the calculations. This will simplify things as we go. As long as you've got 
one of those units in the numerator and that same unit in the denominator, it will cancel out and there's no need to carry it through the calculation. So this becomes three times 60 times 60 seconds over one times one, which will simplify to 10,800 seconds over one, which simplifies further to 10,800 seconds. If we use significant figures here, we end up with 11,000 seconds or 1.1 times 10 to the four seconds. Couple of big takeaways here before we leave. Remember that in these conversions, you aren't changing the amount. You're simply changing the unit that you're using to represent that amount. So 3.0 hours is the same as 11,000 seconds. Two, it's important to recognize that those conversion factors, 60 minutes, one hour, 60 seconds, one minute. And you can create a conversion factor for two quantities that you know the relationship between. And then third, you ultimately wanna set up your conversion so that the units that you start with cancel out and you end up with the units that you're looking for.